the A's and Royals went head to head in last year's wild card game, and it was an emotional game going back and forth, ending in walk off fashion for Kansas City. Mid April, the two teams met up again at Kauffman Stadium, and once again, it was a spirited battle as emotions ran high on the field. Tonight, the two teams meet here in Oakland. The Royals are on top of their division, and the A's are playing their best baseball of the season. It's a battle between two AL rivals. A's, Royals, game one, next. A warm and breezy night at the O.Co. Coliseum. The A's opening up a 10-game homestand pitching matchup tonight. Edison Volquez for the Kansas City Royals and Jesse Hahn for the Oakland A's. It's the first of a three-game series. Should be a great weekend of baseball here in Oakland. It's the Royals and the Athletics coming up on Comcast Sportsnet California. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. It's been quite a two years for the Royals. World Series last year, a great record this year, Ray. So we're looking forward to seeing them here at the Coliseum. And for the A's, they're starting to play great right. baseball. And when you look at the numbers for these two teams, statistically, very, very interesting stuff. Well, especially when you look at a graphic and see the top three, everything okay, but the bottom two, that's not what the A's want to see as far as the earned run average out of the bullpen and the errors. And you see the difference of the Royals. We all know that their bullpen bullpen is outstanding, so try to get to the starter earlier so you don't have to see the back three of their bullpen. Royals are good. They're not sneaking up on anybody, but if the A's can play solid defense, which they're doing a lot better now, the bullpen's pitching better, this could be an outstanding series. Jesse Hahn making his 15th start tonight, Ray. No secret anymore with right. this guy. It is out now. He's becoming one of the best young pitchers in the American League. Well, I know the Royals would think what he did back in Kansas City in April because he had a great sinker. He had about 13 ground ball outs in five and a third innings. The blister on his middle finger is right hand is no longer a problem. He's been pitching great the month of June, 3-0 and with his record. He's even his record because of the great numbers of this month. Back to 5-5. Five and five. And everybody knows with his height, sinker ball pitcher, he gets strikeouts when he needs them. But just a great, great pitcher with a lot of different pitches. And he is showing he is an outstanding pitcher to be in rotation for the Athletics. All right, so Han for the Athletics, Edison Volquez for the Royals. Volquez has been the best Royals mm. starter right. this year. So there is your pitching matchup for tonight. He's looking for win number six in a row as they get set to host the Kansas City Royals. We'll have lineups and first pitch on a Friday night from the Coliseum when we come back.
California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Taste the new black pepper cheeseburger today, only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. A's are back home, and they're going to be home for a while. The start of a 10-game homestand, so we're all looking forward to that. And the first team in is the Kansas City Royals, American League champions from last year. Lost in the World Series in seven games, but they're having a terrific season, so it should be a good weekend of baseball here at the Coliseum. Game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission-free boardwalk is open daily. 67 degrees, very breezy tonight. It was warm all around the Bay Area, but as always, cooling off nicely right here at the Coliseum. But again, 23 mile per hour wind. So keep an eye on that. And let's look at the starting lineup tonight for the Kansas City Royals. It starts with Nelsitas Escobar, then Mike Moustakis, Lorenzo Cain, Eric Hosmer, Kendrys Morales, who's having a very nice season, Alex Gordon, Salvador Perez, Alex Rios, and Omar Infante. There's the starting lineup for the Kansas City Royals. And it would be Jesse Hahn pitching for the Athletics, and the Royals, I'm sure, will think and remember what he did back on April the 18th as five and a third eighths, 13 ground ball outs for the right-hander. Of course, now he's even his record of five and five with an outstanding month of June and continues to pitch and he'll of course open this weekend series and the rotation actually has been great the five game winning streak the five starters have all been winning pitchers in those five so Jesse will start the second turn try to continue the win streak the A's line up like this defensively Zobrist and left Sam Fold is in center tonight Billy Burns gets the night off Josh Reddick and right then Lori Simeon Sogard and Davis with Stephen Vogt behind the plate so as Sam Fold gets settled in in center field. Billy Burns, who, well, he hasn't had a day off in about a month. That's and right. He's been playing great, but at some point you got to try to give him a rest. And tonight will be that night for Billy Burns, although I guess pinch running is not out of the question later on in the game. Our pinch hitting, pinch running, whatever. But uh, he's ready. That's the throwback, the turn back the clock, which is tomorrow, the weekend. It should be good. And so Han is ready. I'll see this Escobar steps in and we're sent for baseball here at the Coliseum. Going to be a nice crowd tonight when everybody files in and gets in their seats. And the first pitch of the game is in for a strike to El Cetus Escobar. 285 with a couple of home runs and 28 RBIs for the Royal shortstop. Outside corner and a quick 0-2 to Escobar. Mustakis to follow and then Kane here in the first. Paul Schreiber. Is calling balls and strikes with the crew chief fielding Culbreth down at first. Royals come in 41 and 28. They have a three and a half game lead over the Twins and a six game lead over the Tigers in the AL Central. And Escobar one around on that big overhand curve, throw to first, and that's out number one here tonight. But it's great to have a good reputation and as far as being a good strikeout pitcher or sinker ball pitcher. And there's the first curveball of the night out of the strike zone, but committing a little bit too quickly was Escobar. But when you have 13 ground ball outs of 16 possible outs, that's one great evening. And he had that, Jesse Hahn did before the blister took over. Right? Expo, excuse me, right? Yep. Expo brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. What you said about the way the Royals are playing, they are a confident group. Yep. And I think probably more than anything, just showing the baseball world that last year was not a fluke. And and I think that was important to them to sure. let everybody yep. know that. And they certainly have they have the best record in the American League and the second best record in the major leagues. Only the St. Louis Cardinals have a better record. So that tells you what kind of season the Royals are having. That one is lined to left. Zobrist, a couple steps to his left, he's got it. First pitch a strike to Moustakis and kind of look back to the home plate umpire and maybe, as we have talked about, catch swaying at a pitch out of the strike zone again, maybe position. going very nicely so the opposite field, but maybe because one pitch had already been called in that zone, he decided to swing at it. So two away, here's Lorenzo Kane, center fielder. See, all these boos, I think, just are respecting a team that was the Amer American League champions last year and played well and you know, typically when you when you go
go on the road and people boo you, it's it's kind of showing a respect. And I think the Royals are just fine with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Royals just won two out of three in Seattle on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. They actually had yesterday off in the Bay Area, so I'm sure they enjoyed that. So three here this weekend, and then on to Houston. So it's a nine-game. 10 day road trip for the Royals and they start off two and one in the air left center fold on the move Sam full tracks it down side retired three up three down inning for Jesse on bottom of the first coming up. Now let's check out that lineup. So with Billy Burns out of the lineup, Eric Sogard is the second baseman and batting leadoff tonight. Laurie's at third, so Brett Laurie slides up. Then it's Vogt, Zobrist, Reddick, Butler, Davis, Simeon, and Fulton. And the familiar name of Edison Lopez on the mound for the Royals, as we mentioned, did not face the Athletics in Kansas City, but he's won seven games on the season, making his 15th start. And a 200th career start, so I'd say that he's probably experienced about everything possible. Yes, he has. 199 starts, just being number 200. So fastball still very good, mid 90s with the fastball. Of course, throws the two and the four with the slider and changeup. And an experienced pitcher, and exactly what the Royals were looking for. They have Jeremy Guthrie, of course. Chris Young is pitching tomorrow. Ventura on the disabled list. And Eric Sogard leading off. How about that? Yeah. First pitch to Sogard is sinking fastball low. Sogard 258 with 19 RBIs. It's amazing when Billy Burns out of the lineup how it changes a lot of things. Sure. Sogard leading off. Brett Lloyd hitting second. Sam Floyd won't lose anything with him in center field. Is he is a center fielder by trade. Made a nice play to end the inning. There is. Billy Burns, who probably does not know what to do with himself. And now 3-0 to Sogar. Yeah, Sogar, of course, seeing himself in the lineup as a leadoff hitter and thinking, well, don't you see that butt I laid down in Texas yesterday? You know, so that's, that's what you do as a leadoff hitter. I mean, Burns would have already swung at three pitches. <laughs> that's true, yeah. And he probably would have gotten a base hit to left field. <laughs> Or an infield hit. Yeah. That one here for a strike. Three and one to Sogard. Laurie to follow, then vote. And a strike on the outside corner. Didn't have to be. And Paul Schreiber is. Uh, He's like he likes to up, strike up and that one a little bit tailing outside Perez. Of course, the new statistic of framing pitches in the strike zone. I guess Perez top the list. So three two and here it is. It's lofted to shallow center Kane playing shallow comes in and makes the catch. 
So one away here in the bottom of the first. Good defense, the Royals. It's Gordon in left, Kane in center, Rios in right, Moustakas, Escobar, Infante, and Hosmer around the infield, and Salvador Perez is the catcher. So really, one of the best defensive teams in all of baseball. Got a lot of gold gloves in this lineup. That's one behind the plate, Salvador Perez, and one of the best in the game. Still leading the voting, I guess. It's his yep. uh, all-star. Of course, Alex Gordon, a third baseman, turned left field. Good position for him. Does a great job. So it's one of those that uh, you have to legitimately hit the ball and get hits. You're not going to make many mistakes to help you. 0-1-1 one, one to Lori. Breaking ball stays a bit high. Lori, 289. Seven home runs, 35 RBIs. Of course, had the grand slam in Texas. He was three for 12 in that series down in Arlington. Fouled straight back, one and two. A's come in 34 and 41, so they are creeping up on that 500 mark. That's the goal right now. They've won five in a row. They've won nine out of 11. That five-game winning streak is a season high for the A's, so... Makes you realize they're playing such great baseball. Still seven under. You realize how big the hole they dug really was, exactly. but they've done a nice job lately. And a breaking ball in strike three call. Lori knew it. So two outs here in the first inning. And here's tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Boot Coors Light. Catcher's ERA, Ray. It's a new statistic. <laughs> and we're starting to see it more and more. Yeah. What is the pitching staff's ERA when a specific catcher is catching? Well, Salvador Perez, 3.30. Steven Vogt, 3.46. Both doing a lot of catching for their respective teams. And both are pretty good pitching staffs. Well, those numbers, while they are great for the catchers, but really, it's all based on the pitchers on the mound. Yeah. Pitchers don't do the job, and it really doesn't matter who's putting the fingers down behind the plate. A lot of confidence goes in the pitcher catcher relationship. I'm sure that Perez has very few hitters or pitchers shaking him off. Don Wakamatsu, the bench coach, saying that Perez pretty much calls his own game with regard to not only pitches but also the throwing game. Why not? All star catcher, gold glove. One and two, the count to vote. Could be two all stars. Right around home plate right now, Perez and Vote. Can't imagine that they both won't make it. And a swing and a miss on a breaking ball. So Edison Volquez with a couple of strikeouts, and we are scoreless after one at the Coliseum.
has to do with the Royals. 15 wins in April, so they got off to a great start after the World Series trip last year. Scoring runs in bunches early in May. It was a 14 and 12 record, so not too bad. The ERA jumped up a little bit. The starters have struggled at times this year for the Royals. They are in first place, again, by three and a half games under Ned Yost. Ned Yost got a contract extension this past offseason, so not a huge extension, but one through 2016. So he deserves that, brought his team to the World Series. One and one to Eric Hosmer. So the Royals 15 and 7 in April, 14 and 12 in May, and 12 and 9 so far in June. Remember they started the season 7 and 0. Yes, they did. Yeah. They were playing hot baseball when the A's saw them in mid-April. That's a great pitch from Jesse Hahn. Of course, he'll throw the, the two and four seam fastball. Good curve change up. So there's your AL Central. The Tigers won tonight. Tigers probably just sitting there waiting. Feeling like, well, at some point we're going to get hot, but it has not <laughs> happened yet. You always sort of think that it will with them, and it probably will. But yeah. They have not played all that well this year. 38-36. 2 2 to Hosper. Tapped toward Laurie, who grabs it in front of Simeon. And that's the first out. First ground ball out for Jesse Hahn after two fly ball outs the first inning. But Brett Lawyer with Marcus Simeon right behind him saying, I'll take it. And You could always say that anytime a third baseman can get the ball, as long as it's not ranging too far, and as long as you catch the ball and make the good throw. Not always happen, but uh, more times than not, it has. So, one away, here's Kendrys Morales, the designated hitter who's having a very nice year for the Royals. 287, eight home runs, and 45 RBIs. Free agent signing got a two year $17 million deal and it's paid off. He lost this one down the left field line and that is a home run. I thought it was going to be a foul ball near the bullpen yep. and it just hooked inside the foul pole and Morales with a home run the other way. Wow. That was one of the strangest home runs I've seen. Well, and unfortunately, it would not slice into foul territory. It stayed up a little bit too much. And of course, the young man knows and has the power to go to the opposite field. As the Angels know that when he was the DH for them, and it just would not slice enough for that home run. Jesse, Shaw, uh, Jesse Hahn, first home run in five games. So ninth of the year for Morales, and the Royals have a one nothing lead. Royals not a real big home run hitting team. Second fewest home runs this year in the American League, but they get one here from Kendrys Morales. First opposite field home run for him. He is a switch hitter. One and one the count to Alex Gordon. Gordon hitting 270 with eight home runs, 31 RBIs. It's the fourth home run given up by Jesse Hahn, so the sinker has worked well enough for him. And unfortunately, the pitch to Morales kind of stayed up a little bit, did not really go down. Four home runs in 86 innings. That is a terrific yeah. ratio. Gordon stands a long ways off the plate, slightly open stance, taps that one foul. I was just thinking about Kendrys Morales. Uh, of course, when he injured his foot, ankle, when he stepped on home plate, that was a walk-off grand slam opposite field. That was the left center field right. home run that he hit in Anaheim. And unfortunately for him, jumped on the plate. And a serious injury it took him forever to come back. And that one hit up the middle, and Gordon's got a base hit. 
one out single for Alex Gordon who shoots it right back up the middle. Uh, off the plate like you said and the curveball back door and planted the foot went out and got it. So that's a very good job of hitting especially with a semi shift and sent me in close to second base. That's just a good job of hitting by the veteran Gordon. Well, here's Salvador Perez. Hitting in the seventh spot. Perez hitting 276, 11 home runs, 30 RBIs. First pitch is fouled at home plate and got a piece of Stephen Vogt. Doesn't seem like there's ever a foul ball that doesn't get a piece of Stephen Vogt. Vogt set up on the inside. Look where this pitch is. It's outside, and Perez reached for it, went straight down, and came up underneath Vogt and got him. I'm just another bag of ice. <laughs> but he's seeing him walking around after the game yesterday. He could barely walk. He had so much ice strapped to his body. A little bit low. Numbers on the Royals offense. They're ninth in the American League in runs scored. They're, as we said, second to the last in home runs, but a good batting average. They're seventh in stolen bases. They're sort of an interesting team statistically. On offense. So those numbers there, but Ray, they walk the fewest and strike out the fewest. I don't see that very often. A 274 team batting average, which is the best in the American League, and that says a lot. You make contact and you get hits. And so they swing it. So good. Put it in play. Volt sets up inside. And now the count three and one. Here's your on deck hitter, Alex Rios. Gordon at decent speed at first, inches off. And Perez bounces it to Laura. He's got it. Fires to second for one, back to first, double play. So a hard hit ball with a slow runner at the plate that usually leads to a double play and it did Kendrys Morales with a home run one nothing Royals Baseball on Comcast Sports in California is brought to you by Real Strong Redwood. Why Redwood? Visit realstrongredwood.com. Authentic Fan Friday here at the Coliseum. Every Friday night home game. Good deal up there. Giveaways. Place to be tonight. Day game tomorrow. Day game on Sunday. 
should be nice and warm here at the ballpark next two days. Turn back the clock day tomorrow, the Saturday game. That's right. So some of your old teammates. So Volquez with a shutdown inning opportunity. Well, the big play was the double play, getting the A's out of the inning. Jesse Hahn, of course, giving up the home run, but after Gordon singled. Well, was probably thinking they could do some more damage, but Jesse Hahn, a 3 1 pitch, gets a ground ball, three ground ball outs in the second inning, so he's off and running with his best pitch, and that's a sinker. Breaking ball, a little bit high. 13 ground ball double plays, third most in the American League for Jesse Hahn. That's a, a good sign. Zobrist good rip fouls it straight back. So two and two the count. Zobrist, Reddick, and Butler here in the second. Zobrist 15 hits in his last 38 at bats. That covers 11 games. 11 RBIs during that stretch. Three home runs. This one's popped up and it could be playable. Mustakas a long run and he's going to get there. Salvador Perez never moved from behind home plate. <laughs> he probably stood there and said, you know what? I don't see it. I'm not going for it. And when it was all said, Doug, he was probably closer to it than exactly. Mustakas. He said, got to hustle in initially. He just wanted Moose to show off his speed. Yeah. I have shin guards on and <laughs> you do not. First pitch to Reddick. Sinker low. Reddick 292, 10 home runs, 45 RBIs. Tied for eighth in the American League in RBIs is Reddick. Both leading the American League. Runs batted in. One ahead of Miguel Cabrera. Reddick's 45 is one behind Josh Donaldson, who has 46. I think it's always amazing with catchers, and we've seen the number of times Stephen Vogt has taken a foul ball off his body someplace, and yet he still finds a way to swing the bat, driving runs. Yesterday in Arlington. At the hot day game. Trying to hold up, couldn't do it. That ball had a lot of movement away from Reddit. Well, that's what you're going to get from Volquez. And you can run it inside, bring it back over the middle to the inside part of the plate, or in this case, run it away. Two two pitch. Low. Three and two. Butler to follow for the A's here in the bottom of the second. The breakdown. So three pitches. Probably all above average. He's got pretty good stuff, does Edison Volquez. On the ground. Escobar has it. Throws in time. And that's the second out. Close play at first. So two away. Here's our true story brought to you by McDonald's on this date in 2007. Hey, that's Billy Butler. First career major league home run. It was down in Anaheim. It was off Irvin Santana. It happened in his 14th major league game. Saw it down in Anaheim. So 2007. So Butler was a very much a fan favorite in Kansas City. And he endured some losing seasons, but he was there when Royals turned it around last year, and I got to believe he thoroughly enjoyed it. It'd be great if this weekend he could go about nine for 12. Yeah. Make one out per day, but just hit the ball all over the place. Be against his former team. Mustakis grabs it, throws, throws a little wide, but Hosper in his six foot five inch frame, is able to keep his foot on the bag. Six up, six down for Edison Volquez. One nothing, Kansas City.
Back to 1965, the then KCA's club featured Burke Campaners. John Blumen Odom, who will both throw out the game ceremonial first pitches. 20,000 fans. See the Charlie O throwback t shirt. It's presented by Ross, which depicts the iconic A's real mascot from the 1960s and the 70s. So, John Blumen Odom and Burke Campaners yeah. were up in the press box earlier today. Always good to see those gentlemen. Some of your old teammates. Well, let's just say former teammates. Some of your former teammates yeah. were up here today. That's a good idea. That's good. That, that word old, you know, just, they don't like that. But that's okay. I call them anyway. All right. I just want to <laughs> abide by the rules of <laughs> players who aren't playing anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. They both look good, though, don't they? Yeah, they do. Good I, shape. I think Campy, who. This is the 50th anniversary Campy, of course, playing all nine positions. And he was ambidextrous. He was a Pat Vendetti 50 years ago. <laughs> and breaking ball, and it's lined to left for a hit. Well, the curveball is a pitch that maybe Jesse Hahn will put in his back pocket for a little while. Because the home run was given up on a fastball, but the curveball was thrown to Gordon, and that was a base hit. And now this two strike curveball. You know, if he bounced it like he did to Lorenzo Kane or Escobar to start the game, it's one thing, but he's left the curveballs up and in both cases with Gordon and now Rios, two strike curveballs that have stayed up and have been hit. So the leadoff man Rios is aboard. Here's Omar and Fonte. Infante, the ninth place hitter, moves the ball around pretty well. And Bori comes in on the grass. Infante got off to a slow start this year, but he is starting to heat up. He's an all star. That's right. Come on, I mean, after all, if your name's at the top of the list, the all star, you got to put up the numbers. You don't want to go to the Midsummer Classic and have those numbers put up there. Not be good. A quick throw to Rios. Get Rios back. Yeah, the Royals and their fans. I guess I, I don't know if I would say a controversy. Maybe it is a little bit. Lots of Royals. Are. Runner goes. The ball's bounced towards Simeon, who stops, retreats, grabs it, and throws out Infante. But Rios now at second base. But the Royals fans have been voting in their guys. And you see that Infante, Escobar, Morales, Perez, well, they're all first. So I guess it's not quite as bad as it was before. They had at one time eight starters in there. Now it's down to five. But they want their guys in there. So it's. <laughs> The way it is, what can you do? There's a base hit to left field. And Rios will get to third. He will stop there. So Escobar singles. And now the runners are at the corners. Yeah, another curveball. Just hanging a little bit. They, they're just hanging a little bit too much. And well, it's a good one when it's working, but well, when it stays up, hitter can really plant the front foot. And be able to hit the ball hard, especially if it's up in his own like that. So here's Moustakis. Moustakis lined out to Zobrist in left field in the first inning. Might be an opportunity here. First pitch is a sinker for a strike. You get a ground ball, you get a double play. The Moose does not run that well. But he's also a guy who can hit the ball in the air. Has an excellent batting average, run producer, especially hitting second. Escobar with five steals on the air, something else to keep an eye on. This one's fouled straight back. So Moustakis, one of those guys in that all star voting. He's having a, a nice year. Batting average is up. He's got 30 RBIs. But... 
Josh Donaldson having the best year of the American League third base, but Donaldson with 17 home runs and 47 RBI. Oh, two. Here's the pitch to Mustakis. Fastball is hot. Mustakis is fifth in the league in batting average behind Kipnis, Cabrera, Fielder, and Iglesias. Jason Kipnis. He's the guy who should be starting at second base in the All-Star game. He's leading the American League in hitting. Kev, here's a case, and similar to what we saw in Kansas City when Brett Laurie was at first base, Simeon playing close to the bag at second. If a ball is hit to Laurie, Simeon's going to be one covering. That's what happened with Escobar when Laurie hit him. He got a flip from Mustafas. And it's unusual that a shortstop takes a throw on a ground ball to the left side, but he's the only one to get to the back quickly enough. Looked like Escobar was thinking about running. So Han doing the right thing by keeping a close eye on him. And that's a good way to stay out of a double play. It's something we've talked about a lot. And of course the Royals do run a lot. Certain guys. Escobar is one of them. Got 40 steals. They've been thrown out 17 times. So Kendrys Morales solo home run in the second inning, the only run in the game so far. Outfield straight away for Mustakis. Infield as Simeon playing right behind second base. Maybe just a slight step or two shift toward left center by full, but not much. Swing and a miss. He struck it out with a high fastball. So a huge strikeout for Jesse Hunt early in this game. Well, a big one, and now if Escobar runs, don't have to worry so much about him. Is Kane will come up, but that was a great pitch to elevate. And then, you know, after three throws to first base, as a hitter, you're sitting there go, is he going to throw or not? And sometimes that can be just enough to get him off balance because Mustakas does not swing a lot of bad pitches. He did then, and that was a huge help for the A's. So two away, and now Han has to get Lorenzo Kane. Kane's been battling a little bit of a hamstring issue. First pitch is low. He did not play on Wednesday in Seattle, and then with the off day yesterday, he's had a couple days off. Two runners: Rios at third, Escobar at first. Kane hit a fly ball to center field in the first inning. He takes a big rip, rolls it foul back to the on deck circle of the athletics. Well, that's a great location for the fastball. Down. Really the only thing a hitter can do, foul it off as he just did, or hit a ground ball, and that's Jesse Hahn's best game. So Han is ready, so is Kane. And he bounces this one up the middle into center field, a base hit. Rios comes in to score. Only just a big, big bouncing ball, but it went right up the middle. Simeon couldn't get it. So a big two out RBI hit for Lorenzo Kane to give the Royals a 2 0 lead. Again, Volt moved inside and this pitch outside, allowing Kane to extend his arms. And so it's a matter of Jesse Hahn. And when he has had these kinds of games, it's when he's overthrown the fastball. Simeon not able to get to the ball. And of course, with the runner at third, you think about diving with his runner at second, but not at third. And that's what happened with Rios able to get there. That was on the hit and run in Fonte and then base hit by Escobar. So for Kane, it's his 33rd RBI of the year. And now Hosmer hits 355 average with two outs and runners in scoring position. 
three hits in the inning for Kansas City. Curve. High strike call. I'm looking back a second a long time before he threw that curveball, and sometimes that's dangerous, but high curve. And then the Osmer was not looking for it and took it first strike. Delivery is a fastball inside two and one. Osper bounced out to third. Second inning. Bob well, has got to figure out some way to score some runs after the Royals down score two. And of course, they all think about the bullpen of the Royals. I mean, it's an outstanding pick. Two and two now on the swinging strike. Isn't it amazing? You really go into every game against the Royals looking at it like it's a six inning game. Right. Good change up from Jesse Hahn, especially breaking away from the left hander. Two two delivery is a fastball inside. It pops off the glove of vote and both runners will move up. Had evidently some cut right at the last instant, and Stephen Boat just had to go off his glove. Catchable ball. So it will be a pass ball, and that certainly looks like the right call. Yeah, I'm surprised it took so long unless they're seeing a delay. So three and two. And the pitch to Hosmer is tapped slowly. Davis has it. And the shuffle, the throw. It's by Hahn. And both runs will score. And it's four to nothing. Mike Davis could not get it out of his glove clean initially. And then when he did flip it to Hahn, it was behind him. And that is a costly mistake. Well, you're right, Ken, because Mike Davis went over slow hit ball once Han couldn't get it. And I mean, it's going to be tough because Hosmer can run and he'll go to second. But right there, just enough of a delay. And Han had to reach back. If he has it cleanly out of his glove, then he's able to lead him and maybe get the out. The pass ball and two run scores. So you look at the error. You also look at the pass ball, yep. which puts the two runners in score position, allowing both to score. And you know, we don't know what would have happened Alabama. if the ball had been hit Henry. in the first and second, if they would not have been able to advance. But that is not the case, and that's simply a case of a team taking advantage of mistakes. So first base or a, a single, an RBI, and an E3. That's the, the ruling. There's a case of Jesse Hahn making a good pitch and being penalized. I mean, he, he made a very good pitch that Hosmer beat the ball on the ground, got the ground ball, but it was just hit too slowly. And while so, uh, Sogard is charging, it might have been an easier play for him, but I think in the way the ball was hit, that's probably why Ike Davis ranged the way he did. Going one to Kendry's Morales. Strike and a good one. So 0 and 2, three runs in for the Royals, and they lead 4 nothing. Hosmer at second base. And the big curveball on 0-2. Morales strikes out, but damage done by Kansas City. The Royals score three times on four hits and an air four nothing Royals as we go to the bottom of the third.
Sportsnet California is brought to you by Kelly Moore Paints, the painter's paint store. So a little work to do now for the A's. Bottom of the third, they're trailing the Royals four to nothing. That's a lot of work, just like the A's have a lot of work. That hat's been around. That hat is heavy, too. But that's a good one. I don't know if there's room for anything in the future, but I'm sure he'll find it. Either way, start a new hat. We said that a couple years ago, and they <laughs> still found a little room. In fact, I think we looked at that hat yeah. a few years ago. Ike Davis, Marcus Simeon, Sam Fuld for the A's here in the bottom of the third. Six up, six down so far for Edison Voltez. Strikes are getting higher. Oh. So he swings it. Well, that's what that's it. That's it. That's two and zero, oh and now zero oh and two because the first one's called a strike, and Ike Davis swung the second. I see. He's. He said, "Was that a strike?" He said, "Yeah, of course. I called the first one that high." Then Trevor shook his head, so we don't know what he's thinking. Yeah. Maybe he's great if an umpire once in a while just said. No, you yeah. know what? I missed it. Yeah. And I, I'm sure some of them do. Actually, I think this year, a couple of times, been told by catchers that umpires actually have admitted it. Which good. is good. They should. One two pitch, breaking ball that kind of hung up, and Davis fouls it back. Couple of strikeouts for Edison Volquez. Closing in on a strikeout milestone. Setting up outside, and it's in the dirt. Side and now it's a full count. Davis trying to get the A's a base runner and go from there. Beats the shift with a leadoff single. Always oh, interesting to see the shift of the, out, uh, the infield on the outfield grass. Now, Ike Davis, not a speed burner, he's had an injury now. If Infante dies for this ball in the outfield, doesn't have a chance to throw him out. He doesn't dive, he doesn't leave his feet, and the ball stayed down. He came up with the glove, but I think sometimes in the infielders in the outfield, they say, Why would I dive and get grass stains? Instead of dirt, but I don't have a chance because it's got to be very unusual to be in the outfield like that with a ground ball. I bet on the infield, Infante would have been diving for the ball. First pitch to Simeon, just a bit high. Simeon, 266 with six home runs, 18 RBIs. He was four for 12 in that series down in Arlington. Got home last night, plane dropped down. About 7 30. Not too bad. The pitch there had some. Hailing action to it, caught the outside corner, one and two. Simeon behind in the couch with full to follow. Bounce toward third, fair ball. Mustakas will go to second, and the Royals will get the out there. Edison Volquez, who has spent a lot of time in the National League, has just one win in his career against the Athletics. In fact, 
It was when he was with the Texas Rangers in 2007. Wow. I see a Mike Piazza signing. Yeah, check some of these uh, uniforms and the names. It's Piazza, you're right. Put him back to the National League. <laughs> Rangers, Padres, Dodgers, Pirates, Royals. And when he was with the Rangers originally, he was traded to the Cincinnati Reds for Josh Hamilton. Yeah, that's right. Josh Hamilton originally, not I shouldn't say originally, but with the Reds when he got to the big leagues and played a little bit in Cincinnati one year. Well, that started his, started his comeback, yeah. and uh, they made the trade, and, and he had some very good years in Texas, which is where he finds his home now, and probably will be joining the Rangers sometime next week. This is Friday. Yes, it is. <laughs> I believe. Because <laughs> the A's players played the Padres last week, Monday, Tuesday, at San Diego, Wednesday, Thursday here, and then three days down to Texas. And back. It's like the barnstorming. It's a little strange, yeah. yeah. I think it's going to settle down a little bit now. Yeah. Volquez last year with the Pirates had a very good year. He was 13 and 7 with a 3.04 ERA. And he pitched a wild card game against the Giants, gave up a grand slam in that game, did not pitch real well. Became a free agent and signed a two year deal with the Royals. Two years, $20 million. That one is hit toward the gap. It's going to go all the way to the wall. Here comes Simeon. Hits the bag at third. Rounding third, heading home, and the A's are on the board. Sam Fold with a line drive right to the gap. Sam Fold, a big hit yesterday. Similar direction. That was when the A's were down by two runs. He went to three and two with the bases loaded. And hammered a single to the left center to tie the game at two. And Marcus Simeon, tremendous speed, the ball in front of him. He knew the ball was in the gap. He hardly had to look at Mike Gallego, just turn it on and keep running, score the run, get the A's on the board. And for a club that just gave up three in the top of the inning, Sam Fold gets one back with a nice swing on a fastball that was elevated by Cortez. Sam Fold continues his hot hitting lately, and a big run for the A's there. So here's Sogard. Now the A's looking for more. Fastball inside. Remember last year, Ray? There was a little controversy with the Pirates where they had a chance to win the division. They knew they were going to play at least in the wild card, but they wanted to win the division. They started their, right. their stud, Garrett Cole, on Sunday. Yeah, and right. they did not win. That's right. So they did not have Garrett Cole. Who was their number one available for the wild card? Two and zero oh to Sogard. Crowd starting to make some noise. A nice crowd on a Friday night. Not close. Three and zero. Oh. Thing about Volquez, who started the game with three pitches out of the strike zone, three consecutively to Sogard, ended up getting him with a line drive to center field, then retired six in a row, settled down, but now single fielder's choice, RBI double, three and all again to Sogard. Brett Lorry to follow, 3 0 pitch, that one's at the knees for a strike. So the A's have answered back after giving up three in the top of the third. To score at least one here in the bottom of the third. Sogard is after a 94 mile an hour fastball and hits it high and foul down the left field line. So full count, one away, and a run in.
So Volquez delivers, and the ball is hit in the air toward the line and left. Gordon in, over, and he's got it. So two outs here in the third. And it'll be up to Laurie to get fold home. Now Brett Laurie needs to get one of those hanging breaking balls. He's got the, the hangers, the sliders from Volquez in his first at bat, and he struck out. As we have seen, Brett Laurie going to right field. Looks like Brett Laurie has the start of a fan club. Last time we saw those heads when Bernie was in town. First pitch, there was the breaking ball. It hung up a little bit, but dropped in for a strike. 412 is his average with two outs and runners in scoring position. Not too shabby. Overall, 35 RBI. Swings at an off speed pitch that was dropping down out of the strike zone. So it's 0 2. Not a big slider, and then kind of swung like his off speed, but it had a good movement down. Whether it was a two seamer or the changeup. Doesn't throw that many pitches. He's got a couple <laughs> secrets, maybe, <laughs> yeah. that didn't make our, our pie chart. <laughs> right. So, 0 and 2. Perez sets up outside. Balls hit hard, but right to Infante. Side retired. He's going to run on two hits. Sam Fold with the RBI double. So we're headed to the fourth inning. It's the Royals four and the A's one. Ace players sharing their testimonials as well as a performance by Donnie Moore and the Radical Reality Team. And remember, you must purchase a special ticket to participate in the festivities. For more information, go to athletics.com slash faith. And that will be following tomorrow's game. Turn back the clock. Game here at the Coliseum. A couple of former Kansas City A's throwing out ceremony first pitches. And the Faith and Family Day follow the game with Donnie Moore and his Radical Reality Team. And they will be putting on a performance that's one that you'd want to see. Alex Gordon leading it off here in the top of the fourth inning. Gordon Perez and Rios. 4 1 Royals lead. They got one in the second, three in the third. So Jesse Hahn had a three up, three down first inning, but has not been quite as sharp since then. And it's going more to his fastball, the two and 
Four seam fastball struck out Mustakas with that high fastball just through Gordon. Actually, with Kane and a two out base hit, he got the ground ball that he wanted, just happened to be up the middle. Got the ground ball also with Osmer, but hit slowly. Just couldn't make the play. Three one down to Gordon. Well, Han in his last two starts, he beat the Padres. Then he beat the Angels, and in those two starts, gave up just two earned runs in 14 in the third inning. So back to back terrific starts, but you can just tell he's not quite sharp as usual tonight. So a leadoff walk to Gordon. It's his first walk he has issued, and here's Salvador. Now batting. As we all know, it's so you got to be so frustrating for a starting pitcher. You pitch every fifth day. And sometimes on an off day you get an extra day, but you just hope that every time you take the mound, it could be a good outing for you. But you get 30 to 35 starts, depending on where you are in the rotation. It's never know. Here's Salvador Perez, who hit into a double play, 5-4-3 double play in the second inning. So we talked a little bit earlier about the all star voting and how a lot of the Royals are close to getting voted in. I guess you could bring up the question should they be voted in. Well, Perez and vote is nice comparison the batting average vote has that RBI's vote has 53 compared to 30 for Perez. That one taps slowly up the third base line. Laurie throws in the just get Perez. Nice play by Brett Laurie. By that time you can say thankfully it was a catcher running a catcher who is caught a lot of games and Dave it's one of the speed merchants. It's going to be a base hit but Laurie what a great play bare hand a perfect throw to Ivan Davis. And Brett Laurie that is a tremendous play and Perez putting his hands up behind his head thinking he might be hit. With the ball going into him, but Ike Davis able to pull it back before any contact was made. So one out runner at second base. That's Gordon, and here's Alex Rios. And that one is a strike in the outside corner. Always difficult when a fielder has to pick up a ball bare hand. What kind of grip do you have? And you hope when you put the hand straight out, you got all four fingers and thumb. You look for the ball in the palm and then try to make the adjustment when you put your index and middle finger on the ball to throw. But had a little sinking action to it, you could say. But Lori does a good job. Here. And what is interesting, Kite, he made that great play and he looked at his glove. Yeah. He caught it with his hand. <laughs> But He's making sure that he knows he appreciates yeah, his glove. Yeah, yeah. That's that, that's that <laughs> glove that's been a feather for a long time. Just look at it. Oh, and two to Rios. Up and away. Oh, look at that. That's a great shot, guys. See, right in the palm, you spread your fingers out so you don't. And then as he throws it or gets ready to throw it, kind of made an adjustment. But throw a two seamer. But the key is to open up the fingers completely catch the ball in the palm instead of reaching down and hit hit off the end of your fingers. One two pitch is hit high in the air fold is under it. Now he comes in the wind moving it around a little bit. Fold has it. So two outs Gordon still at second. And that'll bring a Omar and Fonte. You know, Ray talking about those catchers. There's a couple guys who are having Brian McCann is having a really good year. Brian McCann is 45 RBIs. Russell Martin's having a good year. So I mean, do you think three catchers? Because listen, I think votes Perez is gonna get voted in. Vote's gonna make it. Do you take a third catcher? Well, These are those tough decisions that yeah. always come with the all-star roster. Well, and of course it will also be said that Perez the vote getter, so he's going to be there, like you said, but it will come down to, well, if this is a meaningful game, why do you have to take a player from every team? Because that's usually what it comes down to. If you have an abundance of players who are playing well, then all of a sudden the team has to have one, sure. and maybe then they start looking at we need a position player, pitcher, whatever, and that eliminates 
somebody going. But and if it, and if you have and you have a handful of teams who get just one that's guy, right. that's right. You, you you have to pick the one guy on that team that's having the best year. Right. Right. I mean, in addition to the player you need. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, right. it, it, and the chance of of you yeah. really needing the kind of that's player right. that that one player team has yeah. is probably pretty slim. Yeah, that's true. But I don't see how you can take someone who's leading the league in RBI. Yeah. You, can't, you have to put him on the team. I think votes a no-brainer. Yeah. Well, two pitch to Infante. There's that big curve, and all Infante chased it. So fourth strikeout for Jesse Hahn. We're going to the bottom of the fourth. Royals four is one. California is brought to you by Sonoma Raceway. Don't miss the Toyota Save Mart 350 and Jeff Gordon's final race. It's this weekend at Sonoma Raceway. Visit racesonoma.com for tickets. Beautiful look at the Bay Bridge, the new Bay Bridge. This we can still say the new Bay Bridge. Vote to lead it off. Against Edison Volquez. He's got a run off Volquez in the third on Sam Fold's double that brought home Marcus Simeon. Go takes a strike. Yankees are leading the first place Astros three to two in the bottom of the ninth inning in Houston. So we'll give you that final when it goes final. Vote slaps from the left field, but the gold glover Gordon is there. Alex Gordon with four gold gloves, and he grabs that one. Not a bad third baseman playing left field. Yeah. And yeah, I think playing third base really has helped him even as far as defense, but probably his offense has improved because of his ability to go to the outfield. Corner outfielder, gold glover, but he's got a, did, he, did he pick up his option, or is he... I don't think they have yet. Yeah. It seems like it's a mutual too, but he may decide to go for it. You know what, Ray? I think it's a player option. Player, I think you're right. Because so at one time he was going to exercise it and decided to hold off. I think that's what it was. You're right. So his call, which so he's in a great spot. Yeah. But if he doesn't exercise it, well, then he's a free agent. Yeah. So decision time for Alex Gordon, and then maybe for the Royals. Yeah. Still a young player and a very good player. But when you're good, it usually gets expensive. <laughs> That's just the way it is. Expensive to keep him or expensive for him to go to another team. Another team willing to pay the money. The Royals this year have a payroll of 112 million. That's 17th in all of baseball. 
and that's really high for them. A little bit outside on the 3 0 pitch, a one out walk for Zolpers. First walk issued by Volquez, although I think he thought it should have been strike two. See, Paul Schreiber has been calling the high strike. Now, Volquez is upset because this one on 3 0. Now, if he looked where Perez held the ball after he brought it up, it's reason to be upset. But but Perez brought the ball probably six inches up from where he originally caught it. Yeah, it was low when he caught it. That's. See, I, I think at times when a pitcher delivers the ball, he has an idea of where he's throwing. And when he finally looks up, he sees where the catchers brought it up. And that's what he's looking at versus where that man saw it across the plate. That man being the most important man, the umpire. So here's Reddick. Fastball first strike at 93 miles an hour. Reddick grounded out to short back in the second inning. Shortstop Escobar makes a terrific play to get the out at second, but then Infante's relay throw to first sails right into the Royals' dugout. So probably a unnecessary throw by Infante. They were not going to get Reddick, but a nice play by Escobar. Uh, Reddick almost got the base hit. Is looking for with the shift. And the amazing thing at how teams play defense differently. And you're right, Escobar, great play. Infante, take it, stretch, and keep the ball in your glove. And Osmer had no chance. Unfortunately, the ball went into the dugout. Reddick crossing the bag, and it just kept going into the dugout. But we've seen defenses that shade Reddick completely three to the right side. That's a base hit in Texas. He actually probably has two hits in Texas, but. Royals are keeping their shortstop to the third base side of the bag. This is straight up for their former teammate Billy Butler. A two out RBI hit would be huge. This would be great for the A's to take advantage of an error by a team that doesn't make that many. First pitch is low to Butler. I always think that's funny though that one team will have a shift on a guy yeah. and then the next team will play him different yeah. defensively and I guess they could be trying to pitch them differently yeah. but still the same hitter but Moquez has that two seamer running away from lefties or maybe they think Eric is going to go more to the opposite field and maybe the advanced scouts have seen him enough to know that he will take those pitches outside and go to left field to try to pull Butler watch that sinker drop low two and one the count So Billy Butler first year with the athletics after some very good years with the Kansas City Royals. Well, the four hitters on the A's team that have faced Volquez and Butler is not one of them. So there's uh, just four of the nine in the lineup. A two one breaking ball and that was a good one from Volquez so two and two to count. Kind of drops down and, and just floats in. And just enough rotation. And if you throw it for strike, it's good, obviously, because hitters will not be thinking about swinging at them, at least before two strikes. So Reddick at second, he's looking for a two out hit. Low and now it's three and two. So home run leaders in Kansas City Royals history, Billy Butler is eight. George Brett first, Mike Sweeney second, Ema Sodas, and Craig Frank White. Big John Mayberry, he could rip it, couldn't he? Right, yes, he could. Hosmer. Backs up two steps. He's got it side retired. A strand a runner. 
And we're moving to the fifth inning. It's the Royals four and the A's one. Fill out your 2015 insurance all-star game ballot now at athletics.com. Voting is exclusively online and available on your computer, tablet, and smartphone. Vote up to 35 times at athletics.com. You're seeing some of your Oakland athletics you're going to be voting for. And you will not go wrong with any that you vote for. Hope you have another representation this year. Simeon grabs it on the first pitch. So Escobar lines out, one out. So how about this Ray earlier today Sonny Gray was sporting a jersey top that said the University of Virginia. So that can mean only one thing that he had a college World Series bet with Sean Doolittle and he lost. Exactly right. Sean Doolittle went to the University of Virginia. Sonny went to Vanderbilt and Virginia beat Vanderbilt in the College World Series earlier this week. So not surprised that there was a little wager made. Well, I'm happy yesterday that Sonny Gray pitched well considering Vandy had lost. <laughs> he, he didn't let it get to him. <laughs> well, you can see them sitting in the bullpen with that jersey on. This is game, and I think the skipper said you can do it during BP, but I think when the game starts, get it. And there's Sonny Gray six innings yesterday. His club came back and scored three runs after he was leaving the game. Curve, the strike 0 oh, 2 to Bustakis, and he didn't like it. He's calling the high strike and he's been consistent starting from the first inning. Musaka's got one his first at bat in question before he lined out the left field. Uh, you know, some umpires call the high strike, some call the low one, and tonight, Paul Schreiber is calling the high. That curveball again, so Han tried it again. One and two. Mustakis has lined out and struck out. Stands a long ways off the plate. Volt will try the outside corner and Han put it there and it's fouled down the left field line. If you mentioned earlier about the home runs hit by the Royals. Surprising last year after the A's lost to them in the play in game, how they went off and started hitting home they runs. Started to hit home run. Against the Angels, the, the extra inning home runs, and I mean it was amazing. Nice play by Simeon. His throw to fire. Not in time. Bob Melvin will get in touch with the video room. See Marcus Simeon, and he's going to look on the jumbo board. Simeon diving, but took a little bit extra time to get up, and it was bang bang. Stock is getting down the line, but great effort, great play by Marcus Simeon and spinning and putting a lot on the throw. 
and just barely hit the bag. Zach Davis just could not bring it down quickly enough to get him his glove quickly enough. So a good call by Fielding Colbert. The one out single brings up Kane. Kane takes the first pitch strike. He had a two out RBI hit in the third. Also scored a run in the third. Lori has it. Fires to second for one. And Sogard with a nice turn. The throw is a little bit low, but he took care of it. Throws to first, and that's a double play. Bottom of the fifth coming up. 4-1 Kansas City. Now your team can collaborate at a whole new level with video walls from Prism. Learn how at Prism.com. So bottom of the fifth inning, Davis simming in full to hit for the A's. It's 4-1 Kansas City. First pitch to Ike Davis, sharp breaking ball. Called the strike. Davis had a hit in the third. Fastball is high. Mariners and the Angels are tied 1 1 in the fifth inning in Southern California. It's Walker and Shoemaker in the first of a three game series. Matt Shoemaker really been struggling. The A's knocked him around a little bit. They moved him back a couple, a couple days to try to let him relax a little bit. He's making the start tonight. That's a gamer right there. He's got his Florida Gator hat on. A's jersey. Astros lost tonight to the Yankees. Won three to two in Houston. And the Rangers got pounded in Toronto. I'll tell you exactly what happened in a little bit, but I will say this Adam Rosales pitched, so you can imagine how that went for the Rangers. Hosper has it. Shuffles it to Volquez, and that's out number one here in the fifth. So the standings starting to certainly take shape. Teams are closing in on the halfway point of this season. For the A's, this is their 76th game. So a little bit later on in this homestand, A's will hit the halfway point. Amazing how every year is different, and certainly with the A's this year, the personnel is much different. But you think back last year with these 
at such a great start and then struggled so much late in the year, but still were able to get to the postseason. Royals finished 89 and 73 last year. They had visions of winning the division, but they finished just one game behind the Tigers. And of course, that classic wild card game, which it was wild. It was <laughs> wild and heavily disappointing for the Athletics. Well, they call it a play-in game for a reason yeah. because you have to win to continue to play, and unfortunately. Perez, who got the game winning hit back and forth, and so many things happen. You have a four run lead in the eighth inning, you figure you're going to yeah, win. You sure you do. You figure that you need six outs for a win. It did not happen. Hit high and foul. The Royals then went on to sweep the Angels in the division series, and then they swept the Orioles yeah. in the league championship right. series. So they had a eight game postseason winning streak till game one of the World Series. Lorenzo Cain, the MVP of the League Championship Series against the Orioles. Well, this was it. Perez with a base hit down the left field line, and you see Donaldson down on his stomach. And. The losing or the pitcher that gave it up, and that was George Brett, the Hall of Famer. Couldn't believe it because he knew it's not easy to be down by four with six outs to go and still win an extra innings. But the one play that I remember, one instance that I remember, is when Coco Crisp had to come out of the game. And since full move to full move to center. And Johnny Gomes left. Hosmer hit a ball left center. That it was kind of miscommunication, a little collision. The ball ended up being a triple. And he knew that was it. Scope was there, probably makes the catch. It's a, and it plays deep in a way, so it's a ball they probably would have gotten to. But those little things, and that's why Josh Donaldson had no clue. He hadn't been traded because he was still sure. thinking about now that is center fielder. And I think that green. shot of him on Man. his face trying oh. to catch the, the ball past him, but the A's, new personnel trying to get back to that uh, October baseball. The Royals, of course, is they've got to be pretty happy with their success last year and the way they're playing this season. But in, in case of the Royals, they made some some fairly yeah. significant changes. I'm saying they didn't overhaul the roster, but you know they lost James Shields, yeah. and Butler, and Nori Aoki, who's had a nice year with the Giants. He was not resigned. Aaron Crow, the guy who was in the bullpen, not one of their main bullpen guys, but a guy who pitched quite a bit for them. He was traded, so they didn't necessarily just stand pat. They seen some guys leave. And, Morales, Rios, Volquez, all brought in. So a few changes made. Morales a late sign last year with the Mariners, and then a free agent signing with the Royals. Infante scoops it, flips to first, and that's a three up, three down inning, three ground ball outs for Edison Volquez. We are headed to the sixth. It's still 4-1 Kansas City.
Sports Know It All with Sportsnet Central brought to you by Hyundai. It's coming up tonight at 1030, and it's on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. We'll have our highlights from this game. We'll get to meet the new number one draft pick of the Golden State Warriors, and also let's not forget about the NHL draft and the San Jose Sharks. Bet free to David Felden, the host. One-0 pitch to Hosmer, make it 2-0. Hosmer, Morales, and Gordon. I like that. An A's hat with Warriors colors. Interesting. So you can get hats in any colors you want now with your team's logo on. Sogard slides to his right a couple steps and throws out Hosmer. That's exactly what you want to see if you're a pitcher to See a hitter trying to pull an outside pitch. This is one we're still shaking our heads and fastball. Here's Morales inside the foul line. You guess number two. Barbecue Terrace almost got some sauce. <laughs> you see masterpiece sauce. Yeah. That would be so terrible now, would it? Weber sauce is here though. Weber sauces and seasoning down in the barbecue terrace. Those fans never think a left handed hitter is going to hit him a home run, but it'll be one off the bat of the left handed Morales. More action for Sogar, two outs. Well, as you often say, that sometimes a pitcher gets better the longer he's out there. And Jesse Hahn has had a couple of double plays turned behind him and See the second and third, and that's when he struggled. Ten pitches in the first inning, then gave up the four runs, only two earned. One earned on the three in the third inning, but a lot of pitches, but now getting a lot of ground ball outs. He has now nine after the double play last inning and the first two in this inning. Outside to Alex Gordon. Gordon has singled and walked. Average sitting at 273. Gordon's always been a guy who has a lot of doubles. This year he's got 12. And that one's hit high and deep to right center. Fold is going to watch this one go. So Alex Gordon with a solo home run to make it 5 1 Kansas City. Talk about a two roll fastball oh, hit me oh, and no oh. sink can built high and no heavy air tonight that's going to keep that in the park. That ball was crushed. Sinker that might hit the sweets in the daytime. Huh. That was hit hard. So here is Salvador Perez. Yeah, it is really cooled off. It's still fairly breezy. Says it all right there. First multi home run game. Just three, the first 14 starts for him. Okay, those flags in right field are well, a little bit, but the flags in left field are whipping pretty good. And I never thought I would say it's getting chilly at the ballpark today because when I left my house, it was 97 <laughs> in my. Yeah, that's what my car told me. Boy, it is really cool on. And you know what? The last three games in Arlington, Texas, we didn't see anybody doing that. No, no, there was nobody <laughs> doing that in, at Globe Life Park. In no, Arlington. no. Nobody had sweatshirts on. All the people trying to find all the shade they could find. Oof. Yesterday. Just fair down the third baseline. So Perez has a double. That's his 12th double of the year. Wow. Well, Todd oh, got the first two outs. Five pitches, two ground ball outs, and now a home run and a double. And the home run pitch and the double pitches were exactly the same. Perez very aggressive. And an easy double for Perez. 
So Jesse Hans throwing the fastball, but not getting the sink that it was getting with the ground ball outs. So Scribner will get up and start getting loose. That's good to Rios. That big curve is roll foul. Rios Singleton scored in the third and hit a fly ball to center field in the fourth. Good pitch there, right on the outside corner. Now Perez, the runner at second, does not run real well. So a hard hit ball to an outfielder, and you have a play at the plate. Side. Rios, a free agent after last year, came to Kansas City on a one year deal. There is a club option for next year. Still a good player. Took quite a bit of time on the disabled list this year. We're on April 13th. Fractured his left yeah. hand. He was hit by a pitch. Yes, he was. Yeah. He missed more than a month and a half. But the Royals played well without him. Now they're glad to have him back in their lineup. And you look last year when Hosmer went down. Billy Butler played first base. They did great. And so it just seems like when somebody goes down with the Royals, they have somebody to pick them up, and that's the sign of a good ball club, good bench. Good organization and a beautiful sky. So pitch number 91 coming up from Jesse Hahn. And Alex Gordon home run here in the sixth has extended the lead to five to one. I think of the Toronto Blue Jays. Vernon Wells and Alex Reeves. Yeah. Huge contracts. Dale Swain, the bench coach. Well, actually, Don Wakamatsu, Dale Swain, is the hitting coach now. Dale Swain. A lot of former managers with Ned Jones, that's for sure. And he got him swinging. So strikeout number five for Jesse Hunt ends the inning, but Alex Gordon with a solo home run, 5 1 Royals as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Opposite field home run by Kendris Morales. A surprise, a switch hitter going opposite field. 
against Jesse Hahn, and that would be the first of two. This is a tough play because the A's had a chance to get out of the inning. It was a pass ball. Moved a couple runners, second and third. One scored on the hit, and one on the air, and then the Sam Fold opposite field RBI double scoring Simeon, and this one, Alex Gordon. First multi home run game that Hahn has had pitching for the Athletics this year. Three in the first 14 2 in this game. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Mobilizing your world. So the huh? Sogard on the first pitch. Just adding enough and make it a little bit tough. So that is some Volquez. Not too bad on the first pitch strikes. 13 out of 19. Glory. He's retired five in a row. But he's showing, and with the movement on his fastball, that if you have a good sinker, you don't have to throw much of anything except the fastball. And for him, two and four seam fastball, he's flipped a few curves or sliders in successfully. And so far, the A's just two hits in the third inning resulted in one run. That's it. The pitch there, one and one. Lopez. Seventy three and sixty three is his career record. But went healthy and went on. He's pretty good. Well, it helps. And of course, we uh, noted that he's making his 200th career start. And you've had the ability to go to the mound and make that many starts. You don't panic. Especially falling behind 3 and 0, which he's done tonight a couple of times, both times so far, both times got him out. And the 1 2 pitch, and Laurie swings and misses. He strikes out for the second time. So that's three strikeouts for Edison Volquez, and that's the milestone we the mentioned catcher. before 1,000th career strikeout. So nice milestone for him. I wonder. Perez with the ball in the dirt, tagged Lori, and then asked for a new baseball, threw it around. So maybe <laughs> maybe it's in that ball bag somewhere by the ace dugout. There's big Dominic when you need him, huh? <laughs> Dominic's down there. I think I saw him earlier. I don't know if he's there now or not. Joe, go down and see if buddy's there. Dominic. <laughs> Vote, big swing, hits it high and foul. So the count one and one vote with a strikeout and a fly ball to left field. A's only have two hits. Davis single in the third, full double in the third. That's it. Yep. One walk, three strikeouts for Volquez and 90 pitches. And this being the sixth inning, this guy's called. Rare Davis and Hollins. Yeah. And right now the four run lead, they probably will not be moving around. Osmer scoops. He'll hustle to the bag, take it himself. And the side is retired. So seven in a row retired by Edison Volquez. 5 1 as we go to the seven.
This date, 2005, the A's set an open record for a margin of victory and a shutout with a 16 to nothing win over the San Francisco Giants, which here Nick Swisher becomes as the second player in Oakland history to homer from both sides of the plate in the same game. That's your Ford right choice, and that was quite a game. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up, your oil change tune-up and repair experts. Evan Scribner comes in, so Han is done. So Scribner will take over. Leading off for Kansas City, number 14, So five runs, three earned runs, a walk and five strikeouts for Jesse Han, and he finished at 91 pitches. So Jesse Han. Will not get his sixth win. And really, for the first time in a while, does he have struggled some? But it just goes to show you, too, that Moquez has pitched great, but for Jesse Hahn, who pitched unbelievably against the, the Royals in Kansas City in April, tonight he would end up with nine ground ball outs. But he had 13 and five in the third in the game he pitched in Kansas City. So the same sinker was not working as well tonight as it was in Kansas City. And he would have had more if the blister would have been correct. Huh? Gave Jesse Chavez a chance to step in and finish that game, get a save, and then he's been in the rotation ever since. Her ball is looped in the left field by Omar Infante. So that's the tenth hit for the Royals. Slow curveball and Infante, who had a hit Number and run two, back in the first at bat of the third inning. Curveball he struck out on his last at bat. This curveball stayed up a little bit too much. So now to the top of the order in El Cidas Escobar. Escobar strikeout, a single, and a lineout, and he scored a run that was in the third. Waves at that pitch from Scribner. El Cidas Escobar. Just a touch outside. Escobar is. Turned into one of the better shortstops in the American League. Still just 28 years old. He started his career with the Milwaukee Brewers. But that was part of the Zach Greinke deal. Turned out to be a pretty good deal for the Royals. Swing and a miss with the runner going. The vote cannot handle it. So Infante steals the bag. Swinging strike, so the count is one and two. A couple of times tonight that uh, Ned Yost has put on the hit and run, that pitch out of the strike zone, and but you instructed with a hit and run to swing the bat anyway. Stephen Book just could not make the transfer, probably would not have had a chance to throw him out anyway. As back hit the ball, but could not put the ball in his hand. Ray, when the Royals traded Greinke to Milwaukee, they got Escobar and they got Lorenzo Cain. Yeah. And they got a young pitcher by the name of Jake Odorizzi, who yeah. is not with the Royals anymore, but a pretty good pitcher with the Cubs now. Right? Is, it, is it Tampa, Tampa Bay? Bay? Yeah, Tampa Bay. Yeah, he's he's excellent. He's one of those uh, that they that they find that the Stephen Vogt having a nice conversation with Paul Schreiber on that last pitch. <laughs> I mean, very rare do you see a catcher stand up and actually just turn his head a little bit, but Vogt he figured, why not? It's been that kind of a game. So two and two the count. Nobody out here in the top of the seventh. Burns a little bit when you're behind the plate and you put your target up, you feel you get a strike three and then it's called a ball and just decide, have a conversation, and who cares about whether you turn your back or look him straight in the face? 
And that one on the outside corner, strike three called. And now Escobar is going to complain. And Paul Schreiber is not making anybody happy. And now the Royals bench is on it pretty good. Well, you see Ned Yost yelling, it's low. And folks inside and Scribner throw it outside corner. And it's it's on the plate. It's just a question of the height, and of course the dugouts can see the height, and you can see the height there. And then there's your front knee, kind of look like it crossed the knee. Yeah. It's just the fact that Vote had to reach back so far to his right because the target was inside. So here's Mustakis. Mustakis swings and misses. Stockis had a base hit in the fifth. Oh, uh Flaherty is up. Stockis going after that high fastball tonight. <laughs> well, the confusing thing on Escobar, in all honesty, is that pitch has not been called a strike tonight. But the low strike. And, and again, when an umpire establishes a strike zone, in this case, Paul Schreiber up with the strike. So that's, uh, that's why it was a bit swinging out. And Saka started it. So all two to Moustakis with Kane waiting in the end deck circle. And that one was a more hittable pitch, and Moustakis had a very good swing. Mariners have taken the lead 2 to 1 over the Angels in the seventh inning. The runner at second, Scribner, kicks and deals, and the curveball bounced foul. The first baseline picked up by Ike Davis. So 10 hits for the Royals, just two hits for the A's. Each team has made an error. The A's error cost them. Royals there, did not. How many times have you said that to Shubham? <laughs> <laughs> because when you look at Han's line, two unearned runs, and unfortunately, when errors have happened this year, we've been saying too much about the unearned runs part of it. It will get better. Ball is lifted high in the air to shallow left. Zobrist grabs it, and that's the second out. So here's Lorenzo Kane. Kane with a fly ball to center, an RBI single, and a run scored in the third, and then he hit into a 5 4 3 double play. First pitch to Kane. Swing and a miss. Kane last year hit 301 with five home runs and 53 RBIs. But you got to throw in 28 steals, 29 doubles, and really he did not win a gold glove in center field, but probably, well, he could have and probably should have. He's very good in the outfield. It's amazing, and, and thinking about that, we talked about st uh, statistics and so much of that. that Evidently, you're supposed to play 75% of your time in one position. Oh, really? That, that's something that that when we were back in Kansas City, because they said Kane is going to play more in center because of that statistic, yeah. which I never heard of. But I guess with the new saving metrics and guidelines yeah. or whatever, that that's one of the criteria 
So Kane is playing every day. He'll probably want to go for it. But last year he played a little right field and right. center field. And so he did not play no. because when Tyson, Tyson went in, he went to right. Yeah, exactly. You know? He strikes out there. So Scribner gets out of the jam. Nice job. And we have reached the seventh inning stretch here at the Coliseum. 5 1, the Royals lead. Work to do. They trail five more bottom of the seventh inning. So Zobris, Reddick, and Butler, and hopefully more. Yeah, in the past, wouldn't they be thinking about a comeback, but the A's have been playing. You just think that they're going to find a yeah. way to do something, at least put some runs on the board. Royals are playing good baseball, and that the A's know that. They do have to deal with the bullpen if it gets close, and they'd like to make sure that that does happen and see what happens with that part of the bullpen. First pitch to Zobrist is a strike. Ten ground ball outs for Edison Volquez. A lot of downward movement on his pitches. Ninety three of them so far. He really has been the Royals best starter this year. We have a mentioned Ray the Royals have a couple of starters on the disabled list. Jason Vargas is on the disabled list and you're not a venture is on the disabled list. Now they are scheduled to be back. In the next week or two they hope anyways Danny Duffy on the right. Just came back from the disabled list and pitched. Let's see. This one's popped up. Mustak is hustling over. Perez is there, and Perez reaches over the padded railing and makes the catch. Nice play. It was a long run from Mustakas, but uh, Perez this time said he helped his guy out and got near the rail and guys out of the way and reaches up and makes a nice play. Getting a high fastball, one that hitters are swinging at because it's established that's going to be a strike anyway. It's Jeremy Guthrie sitting on the bench next to uh -huh. Danny Duffy, and Joe Bland is talking to Guthrie today, and he's pitching Sunday. And I guess they were going to give Big Country Joe an extra day, and you see who's start Monday. Guthrie's going to start on Sunday. But Bland's pitching well for pitching well for there. The, the starters have been roughed up a little bit for the Royals this year. But when you have the bullpen, you're yeah. generally in good shape if you're the Royals. It's funny we talk about uh, Herrera, Davis, and Holland. They even have initials for them now, the way they talk about them. But 
in the past you'd look over to the dugout and you see Raleigh fingers think, well you better it's a six inning game he's going to pitch three now you have three pitching one each HDH HDH <laughs> Dave Holland that looks like it hurts it hurts me. I know that hurts you a lot more than it would hurt me right I, I, that's a good exercise maybe it would help my shoulders <laughs> We're doing, just worried about you, Ray. Davis is doing that just to get ready to pitch. He's doing that to make you mad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. The pitch there by Volquez got in on Reddick and he fouled it back. You know, that's funny you said that because Tommy had to ask me that on the plane yesterday. He said, Is your shoulder okay? And then he shows, Wait, yeah, Davis doing yeah, that. that there's my partner, Ray, right yeah, there. He thank you, Tommy. <laughs> You're right. That's not funny. Tommy, stop showing that. <laughs> Tommy Eds, our terrific director. I'm trying to turn the corner. Yeah, aren't we all? <laughs> aren't we all? <laughs> Some corners are tougher to turn than others. Ricky Ball hit hard. <laughs> Finally. Triples away and relics aboard. Finally. Gets one that direction and gets a hit. Whether you fill it with cocoa crisp or a stack of bacon, fans will love the Billy Butler Country Breakfast Bowl. 15,000 fans will pick up the ball courtesy of this family. That's this Sunday, June the 28th, when the A's play host to these Kansas City Royals. Get your tickets today by calling 877-493-BALL and logging on to athletics.com slash tickets. Country Breakfast. Maybe Country Breakfast can uh, put anything he wants in that with a big drive right now. So the first pitch, he is a strike to bump. Since an error? That's not an error. Boy. That's not an error. That is. The Kelvin Herrera warming up out in the right field bullpen. A little bit outside, one and one to count. That's why there's a little. Yeah, little noise going on out there. Uh, Reddit to his runner. Hit the ball. That's a hard hit ball. And you cannot penalize either one of them for that. I'm sorry. That's just. I mean, granted, he's made the play. But that ball was hit hard. And I think you have to give Reddit credit for taking a pitch outside and going that direction. Well, unfortunately, yeah, you're right. You're penalizing both exactly. hitter and field. Exactly. Well, slicing away from Escobar. So two and one the count to Butler. Either way, the A's do get a base runner against Volquez, who's now at 104 pitches. That one hit high in the air to right center. Rios back, still going back, and he's got it for the second out. So Butler 0 for 3. And with two outs, Ike Davis will hit. Blue Jays beat the Rangers tonight 12 to 2. Burley the win. Martinez the loss. As we said, Adam Rosales finished an inning in that game and he gave up a home run. Prince Fielder hit a home run for the Rangers and that was the 300th of his career. So congratulations to yeah. Prince Fielder, but the Blue Jays who can really really pound the baseball and they did it to the Rangers 12 2 in Toronto That's one of those offenses if they start rolling in a game can't stop them Encarnacion hit two home runs. He's got 16 on the year Batista Reyes Martin Donaldson Hits one high in the air, but playable toward Kane in left center. And that'll do it. So Edison Volquez, very good through seven innings. We're moving to the eighth. 5 1 Royals lead.
California is brought to you by Roaring Camp Railroads. From little engines to big locomotives, everyone rides for the kids' fair weekdays after 2 p.m. So it has cooled off all around the Bay Area after a very warm day. Here at the Coliseum, it's 5-1 Royals lead. And we got a new pitcher. It's Eric O'Flaherty. So O'Flaherty, the lefty, comes in to face Hosmer. Big swing and a miss when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change, tune-up, and repair expert. So O'Flaherty comes on for appearance number 14. Now for Eric O'Flaherty, that... Uh Inflated earn run average. And trying to get it down. It was nine in Texas, so two thirds of an inning. Able Look, to lower it a little bit. Bullpen did such a nice job in Texas. You hope that they can build on those three games. Even exactly. you know, it's just three, but they a big part of the team winning all three. And you hope that they can start a good stretch. Lori grabs it. Hosper's retired. And that's a good point because even a game like this where the club is down four runs, you still want to come in and pitch your game and put up a zero, not let the the Royals add on. Number 25, Mando, Henry, you know, I think it's gets loose, but I think a lot of cases a reliever has to be selfish. He has to be really into his own pitching to try to have success. Because you get an inflated ERA, that means you've given up some runs in a short amount of time. That's not what you want to do. So here's Kendry's Morales who swings around and hits from the right side. Very consistent this year as a right handed hitter, 298, as a left handed hitter, 280. Just one has been hit right. So two and zero oh the count. And Kevin Herrera gets up again out in the Royals bullpen. Three and zero oh with Alex Gordon to follow. So you're telling me those fans down the right field line are real fans and they know what happened two months ago. Oh. I just about forgot about it. I did too. They have not. This <laughs> Herrera keeps firing down there. They have to send David Renetti down there. The oh. PS State will be quiet in a hurry. If, <laughs> if David Renetti slash Barney Fife goes down there and <laughs> takes care of business. <laughs> Uh, yes. David is awesome. Number four. Oh, they gave Alex Reddick a hit. Wow. And Mr. Duca, we can thank you for that because that's a good call. Yep. That is a good call. That is Mike Duca, the official score tonight. So that's good. I think you're right. This is what Gordon did earlier in the game. Jesse Hunt has been so good this year. Unfortunately, that was home run number two off him tonight in the first time in his first year as a member of the Athletics to give up two in a game. That's how good his sinker has been that you get a sinker ball pitcher if the ball straightens out, those things can happen. One more pitch, one more miss, and now one and two. The runner at first, not much speed there. Watches it drop low at 91 miles an hour. Gordon also has a single and a walk, so he has yet to be retired tonight. Past the first baseman, but Sogard knocks it down, and Sogard cannot pick it up. And Gordon is aboard. So it's going to be a hit for Gordon. He's three for three. Thing is, I do not know if O'Flaherty is going to be able to get to first base because, and it wouldn't have. Davis 
Looked like he was going to get back. After he made a diving effort, couldn't get to the ball. Sogard just trying to keep the ball in front of him, could not pick it up with his bare hand as he looked up and peeked, which uh, often does that happen. He looked up and so a pitching change will have to be made. First and second. So Rodriguez in, O'Flaherty out. We'll be back. Number 33, Fernando Rodriguez. Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Toyota, the full line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. So a couple of runners on with one out here in the top of the eighth. Royals leading five to one and looking for more. Salvador Perez. Steps in against the new A's pitcher Fernando Rodriguez. First pitch in for a strike. Morales at second, Gordon at first, one out. Rodriguez with an 0 1 record, 4.86 ERA. So Flaherty goes a third of an inning, gives up a hit and a walk. Skied on the infield. Infield fly rule is called. So Darren has it. Well, they like to say a good fastball from Fernando Rodriguez right over the top, and that went at 94 miles an hour up in the zone, and that's where it makes it very difficult for a hitter to get on top of that kind of velocity. So two away for Rios. Rios has a hit tonight. That was in his first at bat in the third. He also scored a run. Also hit a fly ball to center field, and he has struck out. Nick Kerr drops in there first strike. Eleven hits in this game now for the Royals. Sets up outside, and it was outside. And Rio swung at it anyways. 0 and 2. Almost had a little cut to it. It looked yeah, like. Just kept running, and especially with the elevation and the velocity, that's a nice combination for Rodriguez. Good to see his arm bounce back after the Tommy John surgery, and took him a couple of years, but he is throwing very well now. Another pop up. This one to shallow center. And Fold calls off Sogard side retired. Couple of runners stranded, and we're going to the bottom of the eighth. Looks like Carrera may be coming in. 5 1 Royals.
For the Royals, one three and one. For the Athletics, Edison Volquez, very good. Seven innings gives up just that one run. And Gordon and Morales with home runs. Jesse Hahn, five runs, three earned in six innings. So it's the bottom of the eighth inning. And when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune Up. Your oil change, tune up, and repair experts. So Kelvin Herrera comes in. Another good season, one and one with a 1.93 ERA. 29 strikeouts in 28 innings for Herrera. He pitched on Wednesday in Seattle. Well, the scouting report on him is that he throws hard. 98. He throws up to 100 miles per hour. So much like last year, the Royals bullpen leads the way. A 2.06 ERA as a group best in the majors. So a huge part of the Royals' success. And they, of course, have the three guys that we mentioned, Herrera, Davis, and Holland, but they got Cole Chaver back, and they signed Ryan Madsen. They may feel like they broke it as even better this year than it was last year with Cole Chaver. Well, the game the Duffy started against the A's, the final game of the series in Kansas City. The A's actually had a two to one lead. The bullpen, though, did not allow a run. Actually, not one more, but the Royals scored three in the eighth inning and beat the A's in the final game four to two. So, it, you know, you can get to the starting pitcher, but unless you add more to the starter or the other part of the bullpen, not named Herrera, Davis, and Holland. So, 0 and 2 to Simeon. And he got him with a fastball at 98 miles an hour. So this is the final game in Kansas City on that Sunday afternoon. And it had been a contentious first two games of the series, and it did not get any better in the third and final game of the series. That's an automatic with both benches warm in the first inning. And when Herrera pointed his head, that's what uh, got Brett Lloyd, a little bit upset. You throw 98 to 100 miles an hour in the corner of your head. Whether you're thinking, think about it, or I'm going to hit you in the head, that's just not good. Oh, oh. And I don't think his teammates were that thrilled. No, they were not. No. It was Don Wakamatsu leading him in the dugout, and it's just uh, not something you want to think about because that baseball thrown that hard is, whew, I don't want to think about it. Well, and you know what? In the end, it, he hurt his team because he got suspended. Yes, he did. Actually, that game, five were suspended. Or still not suspended, but uh, ejected. And that goes to the manager. Don Wakamatsu was the active manager. And when the both benches were worn and Herrera was ejected, that's an automatic. And in fact, he was arguing. I think Greg Gibson threw him out. And he said, you can't throw me out. I'm already been ejected. Yeah. In that game. Too but late. It, it, it was ugly. And uh, I could say that's. It's over, and of course the fans remember that's why they were going Herrera. But this is a very good bullpen, and Herrera is just one of several down in the pen. A two pitch, took a little off, taps it toward Infante. So two away. So the A's with just three hits in the game. Now, now to the top of the order, and Eric Sogar. The Yankees beat the Astros three to two, and but this Ray, the Astros were winning two to nothing in the seventh inning, and Chris Young of the Yankees oh, hit Houston. a three-run homer in Houston. Oh. We've seen that before, have we not? Was it a two-strike curveball with two outs in the yeah, ninth? I don't know what it was. <laughs> That's what he did. TAs last year. And that was it. That was the. Yeah. That was the the winning hit, even though it was in the seventh inning. It's amazing. Well, the first place Astros. But you know he was on the post game show and saying, "Yeah, I had some barbecue, <laughs> some barbecue ribs," because that's what he had when he hit the three run home run for the A's. The Mariners leading the Angels three to one in the eighth inning. Down at Anaheim. You can't tell me that 
Garcia doesn't have a chance to sign with the Astros. It's the numbers he has put up in Houston. Slapped foul. That's the top of the front railing and then shoots into the stands. Trout has hit a home run in that game down in Anaheim, his 19th of the year, accounting for the only run so far for the Angels. Two pitch, fastball high, not an easy pitch to lay off of at 98 miles an hour. Sogard is 0 for 3. Couple of fly balls and a ground down. And he slaps her from the left field. Gordon gets back quickly. He's got it side retired. So Herrera has a three up, three down inning. We're moving to the night. Still 5 1 Royal. All July home games for just $89 with the July ballpark pass. For one low price, you get access to all 13 A's home games in July, including two fireworks games and the Hello Kitty Bobblehead Night. This is a mobile only offer with all passes accessed through your iPhone or Android phone. Get yours today at athletics.com slash ballpark pass. That's a great deal. July games for just $89. Bucks. Wow. Got the group jersey. That's a group of 25 or more. You get the, the pullover. And this is all good stuff. If got code policy. Hey friends, I'm going to bring 24 others of mine, and we're all going to get the pullover. We're all going to sit together and watch A's baseball. <laughs> good looking pullover. Yeah. Infante is retired. Well, make sure you join us tonight at A's post game for the 18. Vince, Ray, Roxy, and myself will get together and have an unscripted roundtable discussion about the ball game. It's only an A's post game live in 95.7 the game after the game. Roxy brought a sports jacket for tonight for the A's. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I saw two jackets hanging up behind the radio guys. And, and you know, Vince, Vince is going to have his jacket and Roxy. Brought one himself for now. So they'll be tightened up a little bit. Yeah. It's Roxy to the right. That, he, he's the, not going to, he Roxy's doesn't have that right jacket there. now or the bow tie. <laughs> Roxy let that guy wear his jacket. <laughs> so Rox will be sporting the white blazer tonight. <laughs> See that gentleman with the white blazer and the bow tie? I always think of the great Hall of Famer Nolan Ryan. <laughs> See, but, but no, <laughs> that's good, Roxy. 
When, 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 Nolan, uh, really? <laughs> when Nolan Ryan talked I, about giving somebody a bow tie, soccer. that's what yeah, he was talking that about. That was the one. That's yeah. the bow tie. I said, I think that boy needs a bow tie. <laughs> well, it wasn't one to wear. See, Roxy's over like that. <laughs> Roxy liked the, the gold bow tie. Good curve by Rodriguez, but called the ball. Franklin Morales, the left hander, looks like he's going to pitch the ninth. Two and oh now to Mostakis, who is one for four. He singled in the fifth. Rodriguez got the final two outs in the eighth inning, trying to have a nice. Quick ninth inning. These will have Lori Vote and Zobrist in the bottom of the ninth, and hopefully more than that. They will need more than that. Off the foot of Mustakis, it rolls up the third baseline. So two and two the count. Have day baseball tomorrow. We'll have it for you right here on Comcast Sportsnet California. Scott Casimir and Chris Young is your matchup. Day's pregame live starts at 12:30. The ball game at 105. Great Monty Moore will be in the house. That's always yeah. a treat. We're going to have Monty up in the booth tomorrow, and uh, of course he can talk about the great Kansas City Athletics and Charlie O, Charlie o. Mule. What is this? Glenn and Ray. <laughs> I like that. He's a confident young That's man. That's right. Let's see how old is he. You should interview me because I'll be a pro someday. See, he's got the, uh, he he's got the rally cap on, the turn backwards. Now batting, number six, Lorenzo K. And I hope when he becomes a pro yeah. that we're still working together. <laughs> Thank you. And that's what I was <laughs> wondering how old he is. And probably uh, eight, nine, eight, nine, ten years old. Let's interview him tomorrow. That way. He'll be in the bigs by 21, <laughs> so that's another more years. One and zero to Lorenzo Kane, one for four with an RBI single and a run scored in the third. Swing and a miss, one and one. This crowd tonight, twenty-seven thousand three hundred and sixty-five on a Friday night. With the day games tomorrow and Sunday. Good crowds as well. It's supposed to be very nice weather. Not all have stuck around though. And a strange night weather wise. It got chilly about halfway through the game. Lando just overthrown his fastball a little bit too much. That's a nice, easy delivery, but sometimes once you get a little bit extra, 94 is nice and easy is enough. You don't need to throw it much harder than that. Mustakis is the runner at first. And the pitch is low. Back to back walks with two outs in the ninth inning. And this is where it's frustrating for the skipper because. Bring a guy in, and all of a sudden it's going to be an easy inning. And then you put a couple of guys, and it's really too late to, to loosen up to get Number somebody 35. Yeah, it's hard to figure out. Positive. Retires four straight. Yeah. And he walks two. And really, as we've talked about in the early part of the season, that someone steps up, they've got the eighth. And somebody steps up, they got the seventh. This Clifford's going to have the ninth. And this becomes a Raleigh finger and pitches three, which is rare. Not going to happen anymore. First pitch to Hosmer it is a fastball outside. And Volt will chat with Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. 
So Moustakis and Kane with the two out walks. Orioles beat the Indians in Baltimore tonight, four to three. And a run in the bottom of the eighth. That one is a strike. Call. Brandon Moss hit a home run for the Indians. It was his 12th of the year. But in a losing effort, so the Baltimore Orioles have been playing great baseball. They have won 16 out of their last 21 games. And that tight AL East, at least four teams tightly bunched up. Good pitch there, one and two. Well, the Orioles are a team that was expected to do a lot of good things this year. Coming off a, a good year last year. So one and two the count to Hosmer. Bolt sets up outside and the pitch reach for foul back. Hosmer spoiled a pretty good pitch from Rodriguez. Tigers beat the White Sox five to four at home. Three hits for Miguel Cabrera. He's now hitting 354 out of here. And I think I think Victor's back too. Yeah, so that's got to help. That makes a big difference. In, because with Victor's ability to make contact and get big hits, it makes it a little bit harder to pitch around Miguel Cabrera. Red Sox beat the Rays 4 3 in 10 innings. That was in St. Petersburg. So the Red Sox. Got a run in the top of the 10th, held on for a win on the road. So that's the American League scoreboard for tonight. Osper on the ground, Sogar scoops it up. Side retired. So a couple of runners left. Bottom of the ninth coming up. A's have a lot of work to do. They trail five to one. Leading five to one in game one of this three game series here at the Coliseum. When it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune Up, your oil change tune up and repair experts. It's the left hander Franklin Morales. A couple of left handers in that Royals bullpen Morales and Brandon Finnegan. So Morales, 30th appearance, decent ERA. He's got three wins. And he'll face Laurie Vogt and Zobrist. So Laurie steps in, he's 0 for 3. First 
pitch, a fastball for a strike. See Morales kind of a herky jerky delivery, which sometimes makes the fastball look like it has better velocity than it does. It kind of short arms it a little bit. I mean, it looks just watching him pitch, it looks like he's throwing about 95, but it's 90 91. A couple of strikeouts and a ground out. And the big curve is hit to right. Rios is right there. Here is two nights on the play of the game. Edison Volquez, of course, making his 200th career start. And good breaking ball as he had some strikeouts. He had three, but a lot of ground balls, 10. And did a great job at strikeout number 1,000 in his career. That was Brett Lower in the fifth inning. Edison Volquez is the on the play of the game. So the first pitch to Volk up and away. Volk is 0 for 3. He had two singles and a double. For the A's three hits tonight, that's it. Swing and a miss. And it's one and one. And for Billy Burns here, I guess he knows when to have a day off. Huh? Yeah, that's true. Is he on a 15 game hitting streak? The man just still got it. Yeah. yeah. Yes, well, does. I know he's got it ongoing. And yeah. It's uh, does it? 15. Doesn't lose it on an off day. Matter of fact, some notes uh, for the Royals. Alex Gordon got a hit on the off day. They changed a the hit up in Seattle from a, <laughs> from an error to a hit. So while he was enjoying his off day, got another hit. So Billy Burns, a night off, deserving. He'll be back, I'm sure, tomorrow and rest the homestand or at least the rest of the weekend. Get the night are back in there. That's right. Mustakis may have a play, a long run, and he cannot quite get there. Bounces on the warning track. That's that wind that we've been fitting in gusts of wind coming in the booth and that one just took it. Into the seats or near the seats because it looked like it was definitely going to be in play. It's been whipping up quite a. Quite a bit tonight. Flags in left field blowing from left to right. And the ones are right blowing from right to left so they all meet in the middle. That's right. And who knows what happens if you hit one there. <laughs> Swirling. <laughs> To look at him and Bob Melvin shaking his head, and that's Come on. Oh, it's his right hand, it's his throwing hand. Or wrist and just go get some ice on it. Check the right side and up and in. He tried to back off and it just beat Seeker right at his his right hand. And the thing too, Ray, is listen. Yeah. It was not done on purpose. No. Yeah. But it still will not sit well with the ace player. Absolutely. And especially their, their hottest hitter. And his bat or his hand is on his on the bat, which always makes it that much worse. Josh Fegley. So Fegley will pitch run. And Zobrist will hit. So Stephen Vogt is out of the game. Well, we just had to hope that they got him enough on the meat part of his hand and not the bones because all the small bones of the hand and the treatment and hopefully he's going to be all right because that's that's scary. Well, you saw the look on the face of the manager. Yeah. Bob Melvin, he shook his head a little bit. 
Well, he knows that in the hand, you just look at your hand, the back of your hand, and just feel all the small bones. And if it, your hand is hit in that area, that's extremely dangerous. So 2-0 the count to Zobrist. Oscar playing right behind Fedman. That will end first drive. Filling in Bob Melvin as best he can. Now three of them. So this may be a visit to let Holland have a little extra time to get ready. Holland has not thrown a pitch down there yet. And the Royals probably are hoping they don't have to yeah. have him start. Warm it up. Three one is on the inside corner. So now three and two. Zobers rips one toward left center field. Nobody's going to get it. The one hops the wall. Fedley is being waved around. And the throw to the plate is late. So Zobrist with an RBI double. And now it's 5-2. to two And it gets a little bit more interesting. Now the fast boy knew he was going to get it. And Ben Zobrist has been as hot as anybody. Just hits it as Sam Fold did it earlier in the third inning. And... Overs from the right side showing his power and no chance for the Gold Glover to get to the ball. I tell you, watching Fegley come in to score, you could see some fired up A's players in the dugout. So the closer Holland's coming in. We'll be back. Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group LLC. So Zobris with the double. So the A's trying to make some noise here in the ninth, and it's only a three-run deficit now with Reddick to face the closer Holland. I remember back on the 17th of April, he saved the game for the Royals against the Athletics. Then went off the disabled list with a pectoral injury. And Davis came in to save for him. Of course, uh, Davis uh, started with the, the Rays, but right now, Holland trying to save it. The A's trying to continue their comeback here in the ninth inning. 
good pitch to Reddick. He's hit in the air. Gordon on the move, still on the move. Warning track. A couple steps in front of the wall, he reaches up to make the catch. And that's out number two. So Reddick hit that ball pretty well. Kind of see which way the wind's blowing, too. Yeah, it was pushing it away from yeah, Gordon. It kept going. So two outs, and it's up to Butler. If Butler can get on, the A's would be able to get the tying run to the plate, and that would be Ike Davis. First pitch is a fastball just a little bit high. Butler is 0 for 3 in the game. He's grounded out, popped out, and hit a fly ball to right field. And that one in there for a strike. It's the off speed pitch from Holland. And Butler knows all these pitchers and what they throw, and while he doesn't face them, didn't face them during the season, that Maybe took some BP off of them in spring training and, and watched them. Fastball away at 94 miles an hour. Holland actually made his major league debut right here at the Coliseum back in 2010. Swing there. Butler got a pitch to hit. It was that off speed pitch from Holland and it hung right out over the plate. Same one he took for strike and right over the top and good swing, not good results though. So two and two to Butler. Davis in the end deck circle and that's a swing and a miss and that's the ball game. So Holland strikes out Butler. The A's get one, and that is it in the bottom of the ninth inning. So the Royals take game one of the series here at the Coliseum. It was played in front of 27,365. Time of game, two hours and 51 minutes. Final score, the Kansas City Royals five and the Oakland A's two. You've been watching A's baseball on Comcast Sportsnet California. Don't go away, A's Post Game Live with Guy Haberman and Shooty Babbitt starts right now.